um, well, let, let's start by thanking a, a chance meeting in uh, Toronto, right? Yeah. That has brought this film together. So can, can you tell us what happened? And Take it away, Shona. Okay. Uh, my very best friend, who is here with me tonight to see the movie, was having a really bad day. And she and my best gay guy friend, Gray, took her out for a drink. and. That turned into two and three and four drinks, and we were really, really loud at the back of this restaurant that's right around the corner from my house, and uh, these two women were sitting at a table, Kate and her dear friend Linda, whose house we shot in, <laughs> and uh, uh, they were, uh, you know, I was like, oh God, we're being so obnoxious, and I thought, well, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. So, I started talking to the table, thinking, well, we'll include them, and, and, you know, then Kate, of course, they just jumped at us, like, this is, like, you guys are fun, they it's were fun. fun, and then they, like, started talking, the next thing you know, yeah. all five of us are sitting together, we're drinking more, and then Kate looked at me and said, are you an actor? And I said, yeah, and she said, I have a script, I think you're perfect <laughs> for, uh, it's a short film, yeah. and I see some of the stuff you've done, and I said, sure, yeah, let me give you my email address, and, I realized that I had grabbed the bag that I take when I'm walking my dogs, and I had only a Band-Aid in it. So I wrote my email address on a Band-Aid. I told her it was the metaphor for the film, so it was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, wisely or stupidly, she emailed me, and uh, uh, she came and got my stuff, and then asked me to meet her for uh, tea. I was doing a cleanse, remember that? We met at a Starbucks. and. Uh, I, I was scared because sometimes you meet with people who give you stuff, scripts, and they're terrible. <laughs> Which you never told me. And I never told me that. <laughs> but I was terrified because I didn't know what to what I was walking into. Because uh, I know I'm good. No, I'm just kidding. No, but you know, you just you, you, you just don't know. And I read the script in front of her, and I wept in the Starbucks. She, I yeah. I burst into tears. I was like, no, Alice can't die. What? It was a little and then shocking. I was like, of course she dies. Yes, and, and, and then I said, Kate, uh, this is so beautiful. It's going to get lost in a sea of short films. We, this can't be short film. We, we need to see these people. I love them. I love them already. And, and then Kate's friend, Paul Lee, who's a filmmaker, said the same thing to her. And he said, write it in 30 days. Yeah, he's Chinese, so it had to be before the Chinese full moon, which was comedy. So... I had three weeks to write it, so I did. I wrote a 72-page script in three weeks. And then she came back to me with yeah, that, and that. I yeah. read it, and I went, okay, let's do this. And, and then we started yeah. collaborating so, from that point on, and it, uh, three years later, is it, it'll be November. It'll, actually, we met in August, I guess, so it'll be, it's about three years now from script to screen. It's fantastic. It's also, you know, um, you see it and you realize there's, there's an immediate... Um, how do you say, sorry, <laughs> the um, love at first sight, you know, that they have, which sort of takes them to a, a, a journey, you know, and you recognize in her the right actor to, to bring it together. So yeah. it was something at the first sight that, that actually yeah. brought this together. So it's very emotional and you can feel it and I could hear a lot of people feeling it too. I'm writing a comedy next. <laughs> no. So how was it to bring it, well, you said it, it took you uh, three weeks to uh, to write it from... 30 days. 30 it days, took me, sorry. It took me just less than a month. Yeah, so yeah. what did you enjoy digging into the characters more? Yes. Or what happened? What, what was I, your process? The process for me was that I knew Act 1 and Act 3. I knew how it began. Be, started and how it ended, but I had to work on Act Two, the struggle. This was about a triangle of women. Everybody else is, you know, everybody's part of the film, but the triangle of women was powerful for me and for Shauna too, so really need to focus on what that was, what was keeping them apart, how it was compressing until that triangle just exploded. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So um, let's see also from, uh, from the others tonight what they, if they have some questions. For our speak up, yes. Mm -hmm. The complexities. I think the complexities have left them completely <laughs> quiet. <laughs> no, but I still no, think no. there we go. Um, question. I have a question. I uh, was um, true originally uh, in the original short script. Yes, the characters were all true, Alice and Suzanne. Yeah. 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 My, my question was: um, 
Well, she, did she have a, a, a one-night stand with... She um, had a series of them, yeah. She was a, bed, a serial bed up lesbian, yeah. But with the daughter, was that always oh. coming to the script later on? No, it was always there. Okay. Um, was it always there? Actually, it would. Mm, no, it was there in the it first was, draft. It was there in the first draft, but not in the short. No, it was there not in the first. In the short. It was there in the first feature film. That's what yeah. I wanted because when you said yeah. you want people yeah. the middle bit, that's basically yes. what the middle bit is about. It's about that's right. That. Yeah, yeah, it's about yeah. jealousy and it's about loneliness and. Yeah. Repeat the question in case the people <clears> in the back end. Where did you get the inspiration for the script? I have a friend in Car uh, named Caroline who's uh, a very young chef. They, no, no last names. Okay. <laughs> She's a young, attractive lesbian, and in real life, she, as opposed to fake life, she actually, um, there's an older woman named Alice, and, it, and there was one, well, I've never met Alice, but Carol, we're having a drink one night, she said, you know, I see, I have to go out for dinner with Alice, and I said, who's Alice? And she says, oh, she's this older, beautiful woman. She said, I call her the Greta Garbo of the North, and I said, really? Like, and this, so the story is they meet once a year and they have dinner and they flirt outrageously and it was love at first sight but it's a different life. She is a, she's been widowed and Caroline was very good friends with her daughter and uh, you know their relationship uh, between Alice and Caroline became is very special but they literally meet once a year and they have dinner and Alice said to her one time in my next life I will come back as your lover and I was so startled by that I said to Caroline I'm writing that film I'm writing that film about a about a, 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 an older woman who falls in love with a lesbian who can't commit to anybody, and and about what that right. is. I don't know how the story will be. I don't know how it will end. But I love just that simple story. So it's yeah. the spark actually that, mm -hmm. that is it's so sparked. strong. It just it just sparked. It inspired something in me. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And another another question. Yes. Um, I just want to know, do you come up with the line, if your heart breaks, I hope it breaks wide open, or do you hear it somewhere else? Because I, I did, thought it was... Did we, I'm sorry. Did, she asked it, did you come up with the line, if your heart breaks, yes. it breaks wide but open. But you know that, I've heard that line before, like in Buddhist expressions, actually. But it's always something that's really appealed to me. Yeah. We wrote everything in the script. <laughs> There's <laughs> another <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that um, uh, beautiful... Performance, Shauna, and, oh, um, and you made Toronto look fabulous. Toronto, isn't it amazing? She said, thank you. Oh, thank you. Beautiful performance, and she, that we made Toronto look fabulous in the winter time. In the winter time, yeah, you know, the day that we, if I can just, DOP? Uh, our DOP is uh, Maya Bekovic, who's a female amazing. DOP. Maya yeah. is a girl um, who's an up-and-coming cinematographer in Toronto, and um, she really took it on and just, you know, embraced the cold. Mm. Um, the day that of the iconic picture of the, you know, I don't know if you've seen our little true love postcards all around, but um, with the pink umbrella sitting in the in the chairs, that was the coldest day in February or no January. It was our first day of shooting. It was minus forty with the wind chill, and our crew who worked tirelessly were they were outside with us. That was our first our first day of shooting. We thought kill them the first day, they won't complain again. How many takes? Oh, we were we were outside for a while. We were outside for a while. We were outside for a while because yeah. it just, we were shooting other things and, you know, we shot, you didn't um, see. I lived in that cottage. I lived on the island in that cottage, and that's where we shot it. And I, I remember taking the ferry every day, and I was so excited to know that we would be able to show Toronto mm -hmm. in all of its yeah. colors, the season. Most people that go to Toronto don't understand that there's there's an island without cars. It's right mm -hmm. downtown. It's ten minutes from downtown for harbor. And it's a magic land. I mean, I went, the first time I went there was in the winter time. Yeah. And I got off the ferry, and the snow was just starting to fall. And I watched her. I went, "This is a magic land. Who? Yeah. This is amazing. People live here. It's, it's so close. The it's empty a pain in the ass, though, isn't it? Going back and forth. <laughs> the ferry. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back in the city. It's terrible. Yeah. She's living in the city now. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Screw it, we made the movie, we're done. Well, yeah. I suggest the tourist board to see it because it's absolutely uh, yeah. stunning. Yeah. And, yeah. To see we, it. and we also did it, we were very conscious of not making it a, uh, we're in somewhere in America. We have the Canadian flag right at the beginning. I don't know if yeah. you've noticed it, but yeah. right at the beginning we were very conscious. It's not of very that. Canadian to be proud to be Canadian, so. <laughs> yeah. like, not to like break to play the stereotype, on. we're arrogant, you know. Mess with people. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I wanted to add how um, strong it was to talk about age and, and, and women falling in love and having um, this sexual desire and not understanding and starting revaluing all their life. Mm -hmm. You know, it was 
it was a touchy subject to have, you know, to have a woman, you know, sort of finding finally what love, passionate love is. Mm -hmm. How did you go about making it a protagonist in the movie, but without making it too heavy? Did you ever calibre yourself and say, maybe I'm pushing it too much, the fact that she's older, she's finding love for the first time, or? No. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. No, because it was, you know, we, we both feel really so. strongly that it's, uh, it is, it's a love story that, you know, we've had this debate so, and this question a lot about the, you know, is it, is it a, a, a gay love story or, you know, is that her coming out? Is it her, and, and it's, it, to us both, it, it, it's not. It's just this woman who connects with another soul. It's about connecting, finding a soul on this planet that understands you and can just sit with you in your, in the, in the, fun of it all, you know, and uh, Alice had been in a year of post-husband's death, whatever her life was at that point. It's she, about you know, she's, 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 she's up north all by herself. She meets this person who also is isolated and lonely, and because they're so, uh, probably because they're so disarmed that they're not, you know, they're not right for each other, gender, why, you know, that, you they, they never, we well, never would have expected it. They are just being normal with each other. There is no right or wrong in it. They're really, for me, it's just about transcendence and awakening, and um, that's what it's about. It's not, it, it has nothing to do with age. It's, like, about, it's it? about just <laughs> the opportunity, if you open your eyes, it might be right there, if you allow. It might, it might love might appear in a different package than what yeah. you're thinking or anticipating, we do package people all the yeah. time in, in this life. And so when somebody walks through a door and you have a visceral reaction to that person, it's right here, you, you're not expecting that. Yeah. So this is really about the unexpected moment and about and the capacity to love again. And that's, when, yeah. when I read the, the, the nine page short, what I loved the most was that it was about, Al you know, Alice is in her 60s. and. We don't see a lot of movies about people in their 60s, and I loved her. I just, I thought her heart was so beautiful and free and open, and she was just uh, that's a, thing. a person I wanted, I wanted to see on screen. That's why I really wanted to do this movie, because I find that we're so obsessed with youth, and, you know, we're, we really are. We're, we're kind of, we bow down to it, and I really wanted to pay tribute to, uh, not age, but beauty and wisdom that exists in forms that maybe we don't notice anymore as they decline in, in age, with age, you know? But Alice, to me, was um, a goddess, you know? Absolutely. And the husband, right, the spirit. Yes. That is sure. there. A little freaky, I know. No, it, it was an interesting <laughs> choice of narrative. It was, yeah. Uh, because we see another perspective. I mean, the you daughter mean, yes. has put her in a, in, yeah. you know, in a box. Yes. You're my mom. You have to behave like this, and you should be mourning right now, still. Yes. And that's all I wanted to do. Yeah. So it was interesting to have a different perspective. When did that? Uh, person come well, about. you know, to show Alice um, talking about her husband, you would get to see the truth, but her own personal, her, her, uh, what she thought the truth yeah. was. But in fact, you actually get to see the dynamic a little bit more when you see the husband there, because you can't argue with another person in the room. And we didn't want, you know, it all began. Can I tell them how it all began? Sure. I'll tell them how it all began. Um, <laughs> we had the script, and you know, he wasn't alive at one point. Not, I mean, he's dead, but he's, we didn't, he wasn't uh, there. He wasn't in the script. It was his photo. And I said to Kate at one point, who do you see in the photo? And she said, I don't know. And I said, well, to like, photo. Look, you're talking, we need to cast an actor to be in the photo. Like, we, who do you see? And I said, I see Gordon Pinsent. And Gordon Pinsent, of course, is our, a famous Canadian actor. And I said, well, Gordon just simply will not be a photo. If we want Gordon to be in our movie, we're going to have to write him in the movie. And then it kind of started by that. We just kind of went, well, it, it kind of just came out of my mouth. And then Kate went, that's a really interesting idea. I mean, that would be a really interesting vehicle to, to show um, how much, how, what has actually happened in Alice's life with Richard. Because we're seeing Alice's perspective. We're seeing 
Suzanne's, which is similar to Richard's, but Richard actually gets a voice, and you, you know, and in fact, he has a little arc as well where he realizes what he did wrong in their relationship, um, and he owns it as well. So yeah, that was a conscious decision. We, we, we when we committed to it, we went, yeah. you know, we really wanted to use this as a vehicle then for um, showing more of Alice's past. Also, the veil between the worlds was breaking down for Alice. Mm -hmm. There were just very subtle things that we put in the film, which maybe weren't so subtle. But, uh, yeah, the veils between the two worlds were... were As she gets Alice. closer to death, she, she starts, she to, starts sense to sense him. him. She smells his cigarette. Yeah. She can almost sense his hand at the very end he's of the He's kind movie. of there to bring her over to the other side, but yeah. he's kind of really a, not a nice guy for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's just being himself. At the, at the very beginning, she says to the daughter, Suzanne, um, I think your, your mother may be a little lonely. And the daughter says, well, she's not lonely, she has me. Yes. So completely forgetting that yes. there's something else other than a mother yes. that she has. So I would like you to maybe tell us what, which ones are your favorite lines or you know, your favorite scene. Uh oh. <laughs> oh my god. You know what? It's so funny. You know when you go to like Rocky Horror Picture Show and you can like recite the whole movie? Mm -hmm. I'm just sitting there going, I'm reciting the entire movie. Because we've literally <laughs> seen it so many times in the editing room that we can. I, I, our editor really likes. Uh, True is cooking up a storm. <laughs> you know, she really likes that one. And I like work, work, work. It killed yes. him in the end. You yeah. Know? We cut out a really, really funny little moment that of the film, which you'll never see because. The, we lost a card, so the close-ups for one scene we couldn't use one mm -hmm. scene, otherwise it was a distant shot, and I was heartbroken about that, but that's okay. But in the, in, true, in the cottage has a whole wall of keys right. with different women's names on them. Oh, wow. And that was a visual <laughs> copy. Yeah. Yeah. And Alice is looking at them and she's like, wow, she's very impressed. She goes, wow, I'm very impressed. And true says, our friends mo mostly. And Alice <laughs> says, what does she say? Um, true says, oh, I can't. Alice, she says, well, I'm a serial bed-hopping lesbian, Alice. I can't commit to any one mattress. And, I don't know, something about that, I can't commit to any one mattress line. I, I miss that line. <laughs> but I, I don't think, any, I don't think any of you will miss it. But, uh, <laughs> That's great. Any other questions? Go, please. Um, so you directed it together? Pardon me? Do you direct it together? Or, or is it yes. Like, yes. She acted on, I was the lead director on set because she was acting. Yeah, and how did you find that? I, well, Shauna's amazing. very sneaky. I got away, and I would say, "What are you doing?" I loved it. I would I'm go stuck. Up. What it get me to do it better? <laughs> she is actually amazing. We our skills. I don't know. They're 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 very balanced. Like I'm very very visual. I'll go off and storyboard, and I'll I'll be writing, and then Shauna will come in, and and she'll she see the shot list, and then when she looks at it, she'll go, I. This angle right here. Try. Well, let's try add this angle to, it and I'll go, and I'll. It's brilliant, and I'll go. Absolutely, thank you. And then she'll go off and she'll check and make sure that yeah. everything's. Yeah, it, it's. I it's watch great. the dailies like a maniac. Yeah. I'm a bit of a cat licker, you She's know. A total cat licker. Yeah. So I, I'm really, really. I, I'm maybe I'm the perfect person on a team or the worst person on a team because <laughs> I'm a bit of a perfectionist. But I really, uh, I watch the dailies and. Uh, addressed anything right away that was, you know, yeah. where we were off or what we could do better. Because I, I find that that's, um, you know, when you don't have a lot of money making a movie, and we really did yeah. not have a lot of money at all. You saw and the then, credits, the names. Uh, we had Indiegogo money. We raised $20,000 on Indiegogo, and that was a good chunk of our budget. And, uh, you know, when you don't have a lot of money, you have to prepare yourself and you have to arm yourself with what you have. And if you have time and uh, smarts, you'll go through it with a fine, you know, with a fine tooth gum, is that it? Yeah. Uh, and, you, uh, and you really prepare yourself. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's always a shit show on set. I mean, it all, there's always something, and it's winter, and you know, uh, there, we had, uh, we shot in my friend's house, and you know, they, they donated their house for, for 20 days. They didn't even, re like, it, they came over one day and there were 35 pairs of shoes because there was indoor shoes and outdoor shoes. And there were indoor yeah. shoes, like all the outdoor shoes were lined up and they went, how many people are in our house? <laughs> and we had 30, a crew of about 35, which yeah. was, you it's know, so for, for a small movie, um, that's a lot of people to manage. And you just, you know, we were, we were prepared. And uh, Kate is one of those people who can 
can see something so clearly, you know, her, her idea of story uh, visually, telling a story visually is brilliant. And I'm, uh, how do we do that? How do we get there? How do we, you know, we don't have all the time in the world, let's do yeah. it in a one shot. Let's find the one shot and let them play it out in the scene. So the obviously actors. partnership that worked really well. Yeah. We saw Absolutely. that and yeah. you know, give us lots of emotions. Is it something that is going to continue? Is it going to yes. be yeah. Great. Yeah. What are you yeah. working on? Two stories. I'm writing a few. Yeah. I'm always going to have gay, lesbian, queer people in my films, yeah. as, as I am. And I'm always going to have people of different generations. Yeah. I'm going to have people of different every, different mm -hmm. cultures. I'm always going to have... We don't hate young people. <laughs> it's not no, they're going to be young people. There are going to be young people. They're going to be servants. They'll be waiters. <laughs> They'll be waiters that are young in our next movie. Really we good. have We're a couple. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Didn't We're I date this. really gorgeous women? Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Oh, my God. She ended up with Claire at the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, no, Kate and I are working on two ideas yeah, that, uh, Kate's the, we have a great kind of, uh, I don't know, a marriage of, of the, in the writing department. Kate can sit down, I cannot, I'm a pacer, I'm a pacer. So Kate writes the, the, the idea, she gets it all out, and then I come in and go, what's this, take it? And then we fine tune and fine tune and yeah. fine tune and fine tune and fine tune. So, um... So comedy in the summer? Is that I'm what you're gonna, writing? Yeah, we're, we talked yeah. about doing a romantic comedy. Yeah. That's great. Like, I like comedy too. I like well, drama, I like there, comedy. there were a lot of witty dialogues there. What's there the title of the comedy? Well, there might be one called Straight Up With a Twist. But right. Straight Up With a Twist. <laughs> Two straight people who meet via their gay friends. I think we have time for one last question. So, or two. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Hi, no. I'm you, thrilled. You mentioned crowdsourcing in Indiegogo. Yeah. What, what, how did you, what were your advocates? We did a trailer, yeah. What, she asked, what was our crowdfunding? We, we did know. a video. We made. You can actually go to Indiegogo and look up True Love. It was around. It was just before Christmas. Right. Hardest time you think to get money out of people, right? And you know, yeah. this is. You know, they're mostly Indiegogo money is your friends and family, and you could go cap in hand to your friends and family and ask for a hundred bucks, ask for a hundred bucks. But you know what? Here's the thing: when you go on a crowdfunding we a website and you pitch your product and you put it up there and you make a video and you show your team and you show your cast, you're making a commitment. You're making a promise that you're making this movie. And uh, that's something that's different than asking for a hundred bucks from some cousins and friends. People see something and then they get excited and then they want to be part of it. And now we're giving updates and, you know, they, one person came on, Chris Cordell, who's a stuntman in Toronto. And he came on as an executive producer at five thousand dollars. Now, Chris, I would never think I would never go up to Chris and go, "Hey, buddy, do you want to invest in my movie?" I mean, maybe I will now, but I didn't know at the time. And certainly, it brings out people that want to um, want to participate in a more meaningful way, and just are looking for the right project. And so, when you put your project out there and you do the work, I mean, our, we did a lot. We shot a little yeah. fun video, and uh, it was a comedy. This little comedy, and um, and then we kept doing true love updates, like what is your true love, and we have a bunch of little like interviews with people about what their true love is. I, I just want to say that we we had we had truly a sterling cast. We had an award-winning, well-known mm -hmm. cast, and uh, a great crew and a great cinematographer, and they, they were all involved in the video. Yeah, which really was lovely. Yeah, that really, that really helped that we had our team, we had our production team with us. Um, in the video, so we probably we feature Maya, Kate, and Christine, who are the other two actresses. Maya, our director of photography, yeah. Kate, of course, and then our friend Matt, who <laughs> our, our uh, first AD. Oh, like he wasn't the first AD; he was one of the producers. We would so, like a bigger budget next time, though. We would love more money next time. What, what did you offer in return? Because I know you have to kind of give something back. To the our Indigo. See, here's yeah. the thing. I didn't want to give them anything, nothing. You know why? You know why? Because then you're mailing stuff and all this kind of stuff. So what we did was, you know, well, we, what, here's what we'll do. We're gonna we're, the Indiegogo stars at the very end. That's what the, those people were all the hundred dollar donations and above. Anyone who donated a hundred or more, if they gave us their photograph, we put them in our movie. That's what we wanted to give them. Um, and other than that, there was a there was a special one that was a sixty nine. You could donate sixty nine dollars. That was the uh, I want to 
F your whatever. We we also had we go to the website seriously because it was really funny. We like it's all about love and like different level layers and levels of love. So sixty nine was pretty dirty, and we promised them a saucy love letter or a breakup letter. To someone that you wanted, you have to, to be send creative, and then you, and then you catch the attention yeah. of the right. And you also don't have to spend money. It. You don't have no. to spend money so on Indiegogo necessarily. So what you're saying is that if someone wanted to break up with someone else, you'd write the letter. We would write the letter for them, but most comedy. people took the comedy. dirty letter. It's comedy, but so, so well written. It would have been the best of two <laughs> writers writing comedy, it dirty. Comedy, yeah. metaphors, yeah. not yeah. real. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. The dirty yeah. letter is all about making coffee. It's all about grinding the beans yes, and dirty. just like it's steaming filthy. the frothy milk, yeah. and it's it's pretty funny. It's very rude. <laughs> if you want to give us sixty nine dollars, because we're still doing some stuff, we'll happily send it. To you. We have one more question. Yeah, um, I loved it. I thought it was a beautiful essay in intimacy to me. But I, my question is, uh, have you got uh, distributors beating a path to your door? We have. We got distributors <laughs> beating a path to our door. We do. We do actually have somebody beating a path yeah, to our we door. Do. Which is kind of nice. We it's can't actually talk really about it. Can't right talk about, we can't talk about it, but they did say, uh, we well, just got an email the other day. Well, we got an email saying, please don't send. please don't sign with anybody until you talk to us. Because yeah, no, we do have somebody interested, yes. Which is great, which it's is so, great. But we, you know, yeah. we really, this is our world premiere. We're so delighted. For I, I want to thank everyone at Rain Dance. Like, just honestly, like, they, and, and thank you for on Friday night coming out. Uh, oh, thanks to Rain Dance because, you know, it was. Um, you know, this this festival is is an indie festival, and it, yeah. it showcases movies that that aren't made with a lot of money, and uh, it, yeah. it it everyone here has been so amazing and uh, kind to us, including Orestes, who thank you, Ray has helped me put my two auditions on tape. And you were the years. first <laughs> audience we've ever had. Yeah, so we've never I... seen it with civilians. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so, there, so thank you. So thank awesome. you, thank you for coming I'm out, and thanks thank so much you. for being here. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to remind you as well, the same way that independent film exists because of the support of film lovers. So if you care about uh, this film and and Rain Dance and independent film, share your experience by tweeting, Facebook, you know, writing to a newspaper and letting them know how wonderful this was. Sharing is caring. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you.